Hey everybody, welcome back. It is another episode of Wasteland Remastered. This is episode three in our series. I thank you for uh, coming back, tuning in. We got our little party together, made up of four wonderful people. Let's give a quick recap. In the last episode, uh, we uh, went into High Pool. We finished the mission in High Pool. And we did everything there was to do there. We also got ourselves some armor, some leather jackets. We went to the Ag Center. We killed Harry the Bunny Master. We fought a whole bunch of bunnies, saw a bunch of humongous vegetables, saw a satellite dish. And that brings us to this episode. So without further ado, well, let's go ahead and get in. See what kind of trouble we can get into. All right, so here we are. Last episode we left off, we had entered this cave system in the Ag Center. Basically what this cave is, is just a grindy kind of way to get a really large amount of experience points. Because we're all using hand-to-hand uh, -hand weapons, our experience is going to be doubled for every encounter and every person or animal that we kill. And in this little cave system, the only thing you're going to run into are prairie dogs, rats, bunnies, like little annoying varmints. And your axe can tear them up pretty good. And your armor can deflect any of their attacks for the most part. I mean, they're going to chip away at you a little bit. Uh, we'll probably have to go heal after this um, cave. But we are going to scour every single tile in this cave and we are going to come out with a crap ton of experience. We're also going to get some loot. I think there's a couple loot drops in here, maybe some fruits or so just some random shit that we can go sell. So we'll go ahead and pick that stuff up and do it. So anyway, if you like this series, don't forget, hit that like button. It, uh, it really helps me out and uh, I'm, I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers. I mean, it's kind of a small goal, but you got to start somewhere, right? Uh, and also, leave a comment. Uh, so let's start a conversation. Uh, Wasteland Remastered, great game. Anyway, also, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so that you're notified of all the content coming out. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get into this cave system here. And we're going to just walk around a little bit. I'll show you a couple of the battles that you get into, and then I'll probably just kind of cut to... The next part, uh, what we're going to do. Uh, in this episode, we are going to go visit the Rail Nomads. Uh, after this cave system, we're going to call into the Ranger Center. We are going to level up, hopefully. We're going to go to the Rail Nomads, and we're going to complete uh, some quests for the Rail Nomads. And see what kind of trouble we can get into there. So uh, let's go ahead and start walking through this cave. Oh, right away. You can see down in the corner there, there's some rat type things. All right, let's go get them. All right, armored brown lumps of fur. How in furry, how, what does that say? Armored brown lumps of fur. How in furry, fury <laughs> and attack. I can't read, apparently. One prairie dog appears at 14 feet. Well, this should be no match for Frank Sinbeans, Chuck Norris, Martha Stewart, and Leroy Jenkins. That's our party. That we've created they've got axes and they're ready to use them let's go oh Leroy Jenkins kills one and he gets 92 experience all right and here's one of those loot drops I was talking about so who wants the loot well we're gonna give it to Leroy Jenkins since he's the one that killed the uh, whatever that was prairie dog it's a fruit good job all right let's go up there's some more uh, rat things here let's go see what they are another prairie dog Let's get him. Everybody attacks. All right, Chuck Norris kills the prairie dog. Good job. Oh, another prairie dog. Everybody attacks. Martha Stewart kills a prairie dog. Excellent. She gains 92 experience. So we are going to scour every single tile here. Go back and forth. Here we go. One rat appears at 10 feet. Everybody attacks. And everybody misses. All right, next round, everybody attacks. Next round, everybody attacks. All right, Frank Sim Beans kills the rat. He's gonna get 60 experience points for that. Yep, here's some more. 
Three foot tall black rats race toward you with gleaming eyes and razor sharp teeth. Oh my god. Let's whoop their ass. All right, so here again, just to review the combat system, you, you're, you're gonna get two groups. It's the same opponents. They're at the same distance. These guys are all at 10 feet. I don't know why they put them in separate groups, but because, because these guys seem to be missing a lot, what we're gonna do is we are all going to attack group number one. Because there's a good chance that we're all gonna miss. Oh, looks like Leroy Jenkins killed one. All right, so now we've killed one, so it's down to two groups with one rat apiece. So we're gonna split it. We're gonna have two people attack group one and two people attack group two. Chuck Norris kills one and Franks and Beans kills one, reducing it into a thin red paste. That's awesome. All right, they all gain 60 experience. So I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm probably just gonna skip ahead here as you can see, I'm just going to keep walking around this cave. It goes all the way down to the bottom uh, of the screen, and then there's an exit, and you just go out. Uh, so basically, it's just it's just more of this stuff. You get the point. Uh, I will see you guys on the other side of this cave. All right, here we are. We have popped out of the cave, and it puts us right here at the front of the Ag Center. Uh, as you can see, Franks and Beans is down to 20 out of 34 health. Chuck Norris is down to 14 out of 33 health. Martha Stewart's 2 out of 28 health. And Leroy Jenkins, 11 out of 30 health. So I'm not sure if uh, I went over this in the last episode, but a little trick to healing uh, is uh, just staying in this position right here out in front of the Ag Center. And you're going to want to hit the, um, there's a button on the Xbox, it's the left bumper button. And you see the clock in the upper right hand corner of the screen. As I hit this button, the clock is going to advance. And as the clock advances, you can see their health points start to rise. So basically, I'm just going to spam, spam that button and just keep hitting it and letting time pass and as time passes their health is going to rise and you can see it's getting dark now we're in the night time and you just keep hitting that button and franks and beans is at full health looks like uh, chuck norris is almost at full health leroy jenkins is now at full health so martha stewart needs to catch up a little bit okay now martha stewart everybody's at full health and that's how you do that uh, at this spot right here, uh, nothing can spawn, no um, bad, nasty people or animals can spawn to your left, to the bottom, and above you. They can spawn to the right, but I've never had a, a experience with that happening um, because we are surrounded by the mountains. So this seems to be a good place to do it. In the old version of this game, you could take your character all the way up to the town of Las Vegas and then the back of that town, it was surrounded by radiation and there was a spot where you could do the same thing. But that uh, is not the case in this remastered version, uh, at least not that I've experienced. So, all right, let's keep going. So we have come out of the cave system there. We have a whole shitload of experience. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the button to radio, and that's the right bumper button. So let's go ahead and radio and see uh, who can get a promotion. All right, Franks and Beans has achieved the rank of Private First Class. You get two adventure points to distribute among your stats. Now here's what we're going to do. For everybody, we're going to put all of our adventure points into IQ so that we can get more uh, skill points. Chuck Norris has achieved the rank of Private First Class. Two adventure points. Let's put them right in IQ. Well, Chuck Norris has enough to have a second promotion. He now has achieved the rank of Specialist. So two more adventure points. We're going to put those right in IQ. Martha Stewart has achieved the rank of Private First Class. She has two adventure points. We're going to put those in IQ. And Leroy Jenkins has achieved the rank of Private First Class. 
we're going to distribute his points right in IQ. Okay, Leroy Jenkins doesn't quite have enough for another promotion. I don't know why it told us that. I think we could uh, figure that out for ourselves. All right, we are going to go to the Rail Nomads. Oh, well, let's go. Uh-oh. From the depths of the wasteland appears a hostile adversary. One mutant appears at 14 feet. One thing I realized is I forgot to switch us back to our guns. So we might be in a bit of trouble here. Hopefully not. All right, everybody's attacking. All right, Martha Stewart killed the desert dweller. She gets 28 experience points. All right, coming over to this side of the Rail Nomads camp, we're going to enter from the right into the left. The Desert Nomads, let's go. All right, we've been here before. Uh, you can go to your paragraph thing, and it's paragraph number two. As you can see, you can choose to watch the video or you can listen to the paragraph. I'll tell you what we're gonna do, just to recap, I know we did this in the last episode. Let's go ahead and watch that video again of the Desert Nomads. You've come upon the Rail Nomads camp. Ornery looking longhorn cattle wander among dusty tents from which sullen faces peer. In the background, a ramshackle collection of railroad cars, patched with wood, hide, and an odd piece of corrugated aluminum sits on a rail siding. Two of the cars, the locomotive at the front and the caboose at the rear, appear to be in better condition than the others. As you approach, a strained silence falls over the camp and you grow uncomfortable under the collective gaze of the assembled nomads. Finally, one of the nomads steps forward. Welcome, Rangers. I am the brakeman of this train. I'd be honored if you would visit me in the caboose before leaving our camp. In the meantime, please accept our hospitality. The brakeman turns and strides back into the camp. Okay, so that's the general gist of it. They're the nomads. It's an old railroad thing. They've set up their little camp here. It's like it's like they're Indians. Um, they're and they're they're actually three different tribes of the rail nomads. And you'll see three different tents as we come into the town. Now you want to be prepared. There are some dogs and wild mutts and some crap like that that will attack you as you walk through here. The people won't attack you yet. And we'll get to that in a second. That's some fun stuff coming up here. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go see the brake man. And he is right here in this uh, caboose thing. So it says the brake man meets you at the door of the caboose. He thanks you for heading in or heeding his invitation. He has something for you to deliver to the head crusher in courts. He asks if you will deliver the message. Yes, we will. The brake man tells you, Take this visa card and give it to Head Crusher and Quartz. As the brakeman passes you the card, the sunlight catches the Dove hologram and glints brightly. You slide it into your breast pocket as he turns and leaves without another word. All right, so who wants to loot? We are going to give it to uh, Franks and Beans. It's one visa card. All right, that's all the uh, brakeman is going to tell us, and uh, nothing more we need from him. Uh, so the next thing we are going to do is we're going to just start walking down this train thing here And we're going to pass this car right here As you pass the open doorway of this car, you're almost overcome by the strong odor of fermented cactus fruit As your eyes become accustomed to the darkness of the car You can make out a straw-colored floor littered with numerous bottles of Dr. B. Bilios Balfour snake squeezes At the back of the car lolls a rotund bearded figure rocking back and forth as if the mere act of sitting offered a difficult feat of balance. Finally, seeming to take notice of you, the shadowy figure issues an invitation. Welcome to my humble abode, gentlefolk. Step on in. So this is the hobo. Uh, he's kind of like an oracle or a, uh, I don't know, if, if you're familiar with the Fallout games, the most recent one, Fallout 4, there's a character at the beginning that you meet, her name's Mama Murphy. And you give her a bunch of chems and drugs and she foresees the future. This is the, it's the same idea with this guy. So he, except for instead of drugs, he needs this stuff called snake squeezins. So we got to find some of that to give to him. We don't have any of it right now. You can go buy it in quartz. 
uh, but we're not going to do that yet. I believe we're going to find some here shortly. So just uh, remember, we got to come back to this hobo and give him some snake squeezins. So let's keep on going down to the caboose guy, or the engineer guy. And he's at the front of the train here in this car. And it says, as you board the locomotive, you're met by a short but solid looking fellow. He's dressed in garishly striped overalls and wears a rather battered and much patched engineer's cap. Greetings, I am the engineer of this train. The engineer makes a sweeping gesture that encompasses the entire camp. I hope your stay with us will be a pleasant one. You note this in your journal as paragraph 28. And again, you can go into your paragraph thing. Paragraph 28 says the same thing. Um, and what you can do here, you can see our options keyboard is one of the options down right underneath the text box. So every time you see that, it means you can talk to them. You can type in stuff to talk to them about. So we're going to ask him about the brake man, who's at the other end of the train. So we ask him about the brake man, and it says, The engineer looks unhappy. Unfortunately, we have been burdened by a fool for a brake man. He insists on dabbling in arcane matters. He actually suggested that we use an engine instead of cattle to pull this train. The idiot will bring the wrath of the gods down upon us. So clearly you can see there's two different factions. Uh, this guy at the front thinks cattle are the answer and is anti-technology, it seems like. And the brake man wants an engine and uh, likes the technology. So let's ask him some other stuff. We're going to ask him about the hobo. Okay, he says we are particularly blessed with our hobo. Not only does he bring much luck and spiritual blessing, but he is a renowned oracle and many come from far away to hear his words. Sadly, we lost our last hobo when, befuddled by a divine vision, he fell from his car in Needles. Needles is a, a town that we'll get to later. The engineer smiles and asks, how may he be of assistance? So we can ask about Needles. He says, what? So if you ask him about something he doesn't know about or he doesn't want to talk about, he'll just say, what? So let's ask him about the different clans. So there's different clans here. So he says, what? Uh, gosh, you want to ask him about quartz? Quartz, he says, what? Uh, so that's really it. I mean, there really isn't anything else he's going to tell you, so we can get on out of here. Uh, okay, so now comes a pretty important part. As you can see on our screen here, there are three tents. This middle tent is very very important right now and part of the quest today that we're going to cover in this episode has to deal with this nomads uh, camp and we are going to come down into this tent and see what is going on it says the guard stops you at the entrance to the tent and requests that you state your business so you can hit the keyboard button and you can type in some stuff but we don't want to do that we're going to hit the back button so you hit the back button, the text box goes away, and then you just keep moving down, and you can actually just enter the tent without saying anything. And that's what you want to do here. So now we're in the tent, and it says, you find yourself in a splendidly furnished tent. Men, women, children, and elders alike smile and greet you. From behind you, you hear the guard say, welcome to the Topeka clan, fools. At this, the entire clan brandishes hidden weapons and attacks en masse. Uh-oh, now we did it. I am a Topekan. So you got five Topekan men appear at 20 feet away. Six Topekan women appear at 20 feet away. Two groups of two Topeka children each appear at 20 feet away. And five Topekan elders appear at 28 feet away. So there are a ton of uh, foes here. They've all popped up in their little groups. You got the Topekan men, the Topekan women, the Topekan children, and the Topekan elders. We're gonna kill all of them. But here's what we're gonna do. It's a little, little uh, pro tip. We're gonna run. And we're gonna use the run option as a party. And as you can see on the map, they're all spread out around us. We're going to close the distance because we can't hit anyone with an axe from 20 feet away. So you're going to use the down 
button and we're going to move our party down. Use these options, yes. All right, the encounter begins and we all move. All right, so now we're face to face. You can hit the X button and look at the map. Now we're face to face with the Topekan women. And let's go ahead and pick on the women first. All right, everybody's going to attack. Well, Chuck Norris kills one. Martha Stewart kills one. All right, next round, everybody attacks. Leroy Jenkins kills one. And Martha Stewart kills another one. All right, let's keep attacking. Oh, Leroy Jenkins kills another one. Chuck Norris kills another one. Oh, a pistol-packing baby Topekan attacks. Now we have one baby appearing at 31 feet away. We got a baby with a pistol here. That is awesome. Uh, okay, so now we got the Topekan men. If we look at our map, everybody's still pretty far away. What we want to do, while we still have a bunch of health, is we are going to run towards the Topekan men and that little baby. We're going to chop up the baby with our axe. I know it seems morbid, but it has to be done. So we use the run option as a party towards the men, which is to the left. Here we go. Alright, so if you look here, we've moved a little bit closer, but we want to get even closer. So let's do the run option again. Alright, so now the Topeka and Alders are right in front of us, and let's go ahead and attack. Now what we want to do here is we do want somebody to attack the baby. So we'll just use Franks and Beans to attack the baby, and everybody else will attack the elders. Oh jeez, Franks and Beans killed the baby. That's sad. Alright, Martha Stork killed an elder. Let's go to the next round. Everybody attack. Let's keep attacking. Oh, Franks and Beans killed one. And you can see there the Topekans are whomping on us and pounding on us, but our armor is absorbing the damage. So uh, that's uh, another reason why you want to have those leather jackets uh, earlier on in this game. Let's keep attacking and let's keep missing. Oh, Martha Stork killed another one. And Leroy Jenkins kills one. Franks and Beans kills one. All right, so I think that's all that's in range right now. Let's take a look at the map again. All right, so you can see now we have to go all the way to the top right of the map. So let's go ahead and move again. We will use the run option as a party to the right. Oh, now we got two Topeka children and two Topeka children. Let's keep running. Okay, now the Topeka children are within 14 feet. We can go ahead and attack them. Oh, Chuck Norris kills one. And Martha Stewart kills one. Let's keep attacking. Oh gosh, Leroy Jenkins kills a kid. Everybody else misses. And once again, the uh, Topeka children are hitting us, but our armor is absorbing the damage. Let's keep attacking. Oh, Chuck Norris kills one. All right, time to move again. And it looks like we're going to go directly up. All right, now we can attack the Topeka men. All right, now these Topeka men seem to be doing a little bit of damage on us, but uh, still not enough to be worried about. Let's go ahead and uh, keep kicking them in their asses. Well, if we look down at the bottom in the text box, Frank and Beans raised his brawling skill to level two. That's pretty good. Let's keep attacking. Leroy Jenkins kills one. Pretty fierce battle going on here. Let's keep attacking. Martha Stewart kills one. And down at the bottom it says Martha Stewart raised her brawling level to skill two as well. Now Leroy Jenkins raised his brawling skill to level two. And Franks and Beans killed a to another Topekan man. All right, so here's our experience. Franks and Beans got 190. Chuck Norris got 100. Martha Stewart gains 500 experience. And Leroy Jenkins, 230. That is awesome. All right, and then there's a bunch of loot laying around here, as you can see. So let's go ahead and pick that up. Who wants the loot? I don't know. Franks and Beans wants it. So there's a bunch of stuff here. Crowbars, axes, knives. And he can't carry anymore, so let's go ahead and uh, move it over to Chuck Norris. So knives, a sledgehammer, some cash. We got more knives. There's our snake squeezins. So let's go ahead and pick that up. We can take that to the hobo. And a broken toaster. Now, funny thing about broken toasters, I believe in this game you can pick up broken toasters. And there's actually a skill, and that's why we're putting our points into IQ, because there's a library 
in in uh, I think it's Las Vegas you go into this library and you can gain new skills and one of the skills is toaster repair but it requires an IQ I think of 20 or 21 and you can use that skill on these broken toasters and they have loot inside of them I can't remember whether it's valuable loot or not but either way there's loot in there all right Chuck Norris he wants some more loot a knife and some jewelry and once again a knife a robe and a shovel and he cannot carry anymore so we are gonna move now to Martha Stewart she wants the shovel and she also picks up a pistol so lots of good loot in this little battle we also got a ton of experience uh, so we can uh, exit this tent and let's go back to this hobo guy all right so we enter into the hobo's trailer here and let's go ahead and give him some snake squeezins so we are going to hit the use button and i think it was chuck norris that had the snake squeezins so we're going to use an item and we come down here and try and find the snake squeezins there it is so we're going to use the snake squeezins and you're just going to hit a you're going to use it at your current position you stare with utter disbelief as the snake squeezins vanishes down his throat the hobo smiles his eyes glaze over and he burps beware the man who has lived longer than the wasteland your oracle's eyes clear and he smiles drunkenly so that's it beware the man who has lived longer than the wasteland not sure what that means I'm sure we'll find out later all right so now let's go ahead and look at Franks and Beans we're gonna pull all of our money we should have right around seventeen hundred dollars and what we're gonna do now is we are gonna go into the town of Quartz we are gonna sell all of the loot that we got and hopefully we will have enough money to buy everybody a bulletproof shirt that's the next level of armor and they cost about 500 bucks each so we need about two thousand dollars so let's go ahead to quartz see if we can't sell off all of our stuff uh oh dire coyotes attack let's uh, punch him in the face Ooh, franks and beans killed one so you can see here Leroy Jenkins he hit him twice as your brawling skill goes up they get more uh, turns at hand-to-hand -hand combat that's why we're using hand-to-hand -hand combat here at the beginning of the game plus you get double experience points so Franks and Beans gets 90 experience all right back out into the wasteland we go all right we're in the wasteland now so we gotta give everybody their guns let's equip their pistols all right everybody's got their pistols equipped we also need to heal look at Leroy Jenkins his health is down to three so we're gonna come here and we're gonna hit that button again and we're just gonna spam it so that everybody's health can come up we need some sort of theme song for this spam and the button raising everybody's health all right maybe not like that but uh, you know what I'm saying you get the point all right everybody's health is full except for Leroy Jenkins come on Leroy Jenkins catch up okay finally everybody at full health let's continue on to quartz all right here's quartz remember we're going to go in this bottom left hand corner here and we're going to come in this little shop who wants to enter let's have franks and beans enter first he is going to sell now remember the fruits were 23 uh dollars if you sold them at the ag center so we're not going to sell the fruits here we can sell the extra crowbar we can sell these extra axes and that's pretty much all he's going to sell right now. Let's uh, have Chuck Norris enter. He can sell this club. He can sell the grenade. We're not going to use that. You can sell the plastic explosive. We're not going to use that. You can sell these two knives. No knife fighting for us. Sell the sledgehammer. You can sell these other two knives. Sell the crowbar, the knife. You can sell this other knife. Sell this robe. Now these two pieces of jewelry here. These jewelry you can sell in the town of high pool for 75 bucks so we're not going to sell those here either all right let's have martha stewart enter martha stewart has an extra axe an extra shovel 
We're going to hold on to that shovel, though, because I think we might need it to dig up some treasure here in a little bit. And she's got an extra pistol she can sell. You know what I did, though? I accidentally sold her axe. Whoops. I'm going to have to buy another one. All right, Martha Stewart needs to enter again. Now she's going to buy an axe. She's going to buy it back. There we go. All right, Leroy Jenkins gets to enter. What's he got to sell? Nothing. Excellent. All right, so let's go ahead and look at Franks and Beans again, and we're going to pull all our money. 2,234 buckaroos. We have enough to buy our bulletproof shirts. So let's go back in. Franks and Beans is going to enter, and he's going to buy four bulletproof shirts. You can see them right here, 500 bucks. One, two, three, four. All right, take a look at Franks and Beans. He should have bulletproof shirts. So here's one, and we're going to equip his, and then we're going to take this next bulletproof shirt. We're going to trade it to Chuck Norris. Oh, and there is another bulletproof shirt. Here we go, this one. Let's trade that to Martha Stewart. And this last bulletproof shirt, we're gonna trade to Leroy Jenkins. Okay, now we're gonna go to each person and equip their bulletproof shirts. All right, everybody's bulletproof shirt is equipped. You can see everybody's armor class is now level two. So let's go back in to this shop here, and now we're gonna sell back our leather jackets. We do not need these leather jackets anymore. Now Chuck Norris, now Martha Stewart, now Leroy Jenkins. All right, and we're back out in courts. Let's go ahead and look at Franks and Beans. We're gonna pull our money, 634 bucks, and let's get out of here. Back to the wasteland. Okay, we're gonna to go to the Ag Center. We're gonna sell our fruits. Here's the Ag Center. Franks and Beans will sell. Fruit, fruit, fruit. I don't think anybody else had any more fruits. So let's double check. Oh, Chuck Norris has these jewelry and they are 75 bucks here at the Ag Center too. So we don't have to go back to High Pool. Let's just sell these here. All right, and that is it. Let's go ahead and get Franks and Beans. Pull all of our money. We now have 853 bucks. Excellent. We are slowly building that uh, money back up again. All right, let's head back out into the wasteland because we have something else that we need to do. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we are gonna go see the head crusher and give him the visa card. But before we do that, we're gonna stop at this mine here. See right here, there's a mine right up here. And we are gonna enter into the mine and get some, get some very important loot. All right, we got to be really careful in here. There is a beast called a Shadow Claw. And if you run into a Shadow Claw, he will do some serious, serious damage to this party. Uh, so let's be really careful. You can see the room off to the right. That's where we want to go. There's some loot in there. There's also a shit ton of enemies that like little annoying enemies that'll pop up. We can get some experience. But if one of those shadow claws pops up, we are in trouble. I'm kind of nervous about this, I'm not going to lie. Uh, let's switch everybody back to their axes and go try and get into that room. All right, everybody's got their axes. We are at the door to this room and it is locked. So we are going to use Chuck Norris. He's a pick lock guy. We're going to use a skill. We're going to use pick lock and we're going to use it on this door. Bam, and we are in. What the old shack is made of weather beaten abode, adobe, the door of rotting wood and rusting iron. It is locked. Well, now it's not locked anymore. Let's go in here. We're going to fight some baddies and we're going to get some loot. Here we go. Rangers, kill the scum. Yell the desert scabs. Three scabs appear at two feet. Let's chop them up with our axes. Everybody attacks. Wow, Chuck Norris kills one. Leroy Jenkins kills two of them. Good job. So here we go, some experience. Chuck Norris with 90, Leroy Jenkins with 180. And there's some loot. Who wants it? Let's give it to Leroy Jenkins. So two canteens, a hand mirror, a shovel, and a pickaxe. Let's keep walking around this room. Same thing here. Now we got a lock, locked strong box here. So we are gonna use Chuck Norris 
his skill of picklock on this lockbox. Bam! Who wants to loot? Leroy Jenkins wants it. One rope and four gas masks. Perfect. That's kind of really all you want from here. I don't remember if you can use those gas masks. We're going to go sell them. So let's walk around here and see if we can't get some more experience. Just in the side of this little room. Oh, more loot. Who wants it? Leroy Jenkins gets a rope and some cash. Uh-oh, a glow viper. The most deadly snake in the desert. Oh, shit. Let's kill it. Everybody attacks. Boy, this thing's got a lot of health. Oh, my goodness. Oh, finally, Martha Stewart kills it. See how everybody's getting two hits now? That is really important, especially now that we're in this cave thing, because that glow viper had a ton of health. 100 experience. All right, let's get the hell out of here. All right, you can go walk around this cave, but I'm telling you, there are some... That, that Shadow Claw will, will mess up your party big time, and we are not ready for that. Uh, so let's get the hell out of here. All right, here's the plan. We're going back to Quartz. We are going to sell everything we can. And then we're going to go try and find the Head Crusher. All right, here we go to sell stuff. Leroy Jenkins has extra canteens, hand mirrors. We're going to keep the shovel. And we're going to sell these gas masks. All right, so we have sold everything. Let's go back to Franks and Beans. We're going to pull the money. 1270 bucks. Awesome. Now we're going to exit Quartz. And then we're going to re-enter Quartz in a different spot so that we can see the Head Crusher. All right, back out into the wasteland. And then we're going to come over here to this side, and we're going to enter right here. All right, this puts us by this graveyard. And what we want to do is we want to go see the Head Crusher. And if you remember from the Nomads, the Head Crusher is in this bar. So we're going to go around to the front of the bar, and we are going to enter Scott's Bar. Let's go. All right, so you see we got a mission added. It says Free Quartz. Scott's bar is noisy and smoky with many people and tables. To the west is the bar. To the east is a low stage. Everybody stops and looks at you when you enter, and then they return to their conversations. You hear people mutter something about a gang taking over the town. So that's what you got to do in courts. You got to find this uh, gang. And as you're walking around this bar, it says a, a pretty barmaid speeds by. Her name tag says, hi, I'm Ellen. She only stands still near the bar. So we're not really going to worry about anything like that right now. The only thing we're going to do is we're going to come down Things here. Things have been oh. rather nasty in courts, you're told. One of the larger desert bands, led by a guy called Ugly, has taken an intense interest in uh, civic affairs. Normally a town of our size could drive them off because the bandits don't try all that hard when attacking. But this time they hit us with a vengeance. It's almost like they don't want to remain in the desert. Okay, so um, the guys at this table are telling you stuff, it, and it has to do with the uh, the mission that you got to do here, but we're not worried about that right now. Okay, right here down at the bottom, this is the Head Crusher. The Head Crusher invites you to sit down. Okay, so we're going to use Franks and Beans, an item. He's got the Visa card, and we're going to use this to the right, and nothing happens. Okay. So let's try that again. We're going to use this Visa card and just use it right at our current position. Head Crusher says, thank you. Go to the Atchison's tent and tell them Caterpillar. All right, so Head Crusher gives us a password. And um, now you can ask him some stuff. You can ask him about the break man that sent you here. He said, I'd sure love to chat, but the topic bores me. Uh, so, I don't know what else to, to ask him about. Um, you can ask him, um, I don't know, well, let's just uh, keep going here. Okay, so if you go this way, you see here there's some bathrooms, and there's like a bodyguard standing in front of one of the bathrooms. That's the women's bathroom, and that's why you want to have one female character in your party, because you're going to have to disband her from the party, and she's going to have to go into that bathroom to get like you know, part of a quest here. So let's go ahead and get the hell out of Quartz and go back to the Rail Nomads and use that password on the Atchin Atkinson clan. Back to Quartz we go. Oh God, we fell in the water. 
All right, back into the Desert Nomads. All right, so here's the At Atkinson tent. The guard stops you and says, what is your business? So we use the keyboard and we will say Caterpillar. The guard looks you over closely and then tells you to wait outside as he disappears into the tent. You hear a brief muffled conversation and the guard returns with another man. The newcomer introduces himself as the head man of the Atchison clan. He understands that you've done a great favor for his brother. He dismisses the guard and motions you closer. He explains that they keep no treasure here, but he will give you directions to a secret cache. Here, take this shovel. He instructs you. Stand on the south rail, west end. Take 12 paces to the south. Dig, and you shall be rewarded. The guard returns, and the headman bids you good day. All right, so there it is. Mission updated. Investigate the rail nomads. Who wants to loot? Franks and Beans wants it. Okay, so you see there's two rails here. We are on the south rail. He said stand at the west end, which is right here, and take 12 paces to the south. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. All right, we're gonna use the shuffle and we're gonna dig. All right, we found loot. Who wants it? Franks and Beans wants it. And look at all this loot. Two grenades, four pistols, two jewelry, four clips. Franks and Beans inventory is full. Let's give the rest to Chuck Norris. And 126 bucks in cash. Uh-oh, looks like, uh, hey, get out of here. One rail thief appears at 14 feet. Oh my God, look, we're surrounded by bad people. Oh God rail thieves let's whoop their asses all right so as you can see the rail thieves go first because they got their guns and in combat here in this game people with the better guns go first and then people with hand to hand go second wow franks and beans killed one chuck norris killed one looks like we only got one left let's attack him chuck norris killed him so there we go franks and beans 120 experience chuck norris 240 and look at all, there's more loot. Who wants it? Uh, Leroy Jenkins wants it. It's a crowbar. Who wants this loot? Leroy Jenkins. It's a crowbar. Who wants this loot? Leroy Jenkins. It's a crowbar. All right. You know what we got? Uh-oh. It's some sort of dog. A nuke pooch appears at 14 feet. Let's uh, chop him up with our axe. Oh, looks like Franks and Beans killed him. Good job. 400 experience for killing a nuke pooch. Awesome. All right, so you know what we got to do? We got to go back to courts. We got to sell off all this loot that we got. And then we're going to have a crap ton of money. Here we are back in the wasteland. Make sure that you equip those pistols. Okay, here we go. Ba oops, back to courts. Uh-oh, three slithering iguanas appear at 14 feet. Let's uh, shoot them in the face. Martha Stork kills one. Leroy Jenkins kills one. And Martha Stork kills another one. And they each get some experience. All right, back in the courts. All right, who wants to enter? Franks and Beans. All right, we can sell the shovel, the grenades, the pistols, and not the jewelry. Chuck Norris is in now, and we're actually gonna have him sell these extra clips here. And Leroy Jenkins got some extra stuff to sell. All right, let's pull our money. We have 1,943, should be right around 2,000 right now at this point in the game. Um, so let's go back out. We'll go to the Ag Center and sell those two jewelry pieces. Uh-oh, a radioactive vermin appears at 10 feet. Oh, crap. Chuck Norris kills one. Franks and Beans swaps equipment. I accidentally hit the wrong button there. Looks like Franks and Beans went to his fists. We don't want that. Let's change him back. Okay, all right, let's, uh, oh God, we're back in the water. Two wild canines appear. Let's kill them. Chuck Norris kills one. Well, it looks like Martha Stewart's weapon is jammed. Uh, let's unjam it. All right, Chuck Norris kills one. Looks like Martha Stewart unjammed her weapon. All right, back to the Ag Center. Let's sell this jewelry. All right, there it is, $2,093. That is excellent. Let's go outside the Ag Center here and heal everybody so we're at full health. All right, spamming that button again right here. Let's get everybody up to full health. And uh, while we're doing that, um, if you like this video, leave a like. Uh, if you like the series, leave a like. If you um, want to see more, leave a comment below. 
let me know how your game's going and um, subscribe to the channel so that um, you know you can see more of this stuff and hit that bell notification so that you're notified of all the content coming out um, and I think that's going to do it for this episode uh, we have done all we can do in the Realm Nomads we've got a lot of loot and treasure we got to go back up to Quartz so that we can finish that mission apparently their town's been uh, or being held hostage by a gang uh, so we got to do that uh, lots of other stuff we're going to get into here as this series goes along uh, but so so far just to recap High Pool's been cleared, Ag Center we've done, the Rail Nomads we've done. Uh, we can actually go into the mine shaft again and we can get some more experience uh, by, you know, fighting those uh, baddies in there. But honestly, that Shadow Claw scares the shit out of me and I do not want anyone in this party to die. I've uh, taken a liking to all of them. So, one last thing that we're going to do though, guys. We are going to hit the uh, radio button. Let's see if anybody can uh, level up. Franks and Beans has achieved the rank of specialist. Let's put his points in IQ. And actually for Franks and Beans, we are also going to put one more in strength. And nobody else has enough experience to be considered for a promotion at that time. Just Franks and Beans. So that's it for this episode. Next episode, we are going to come back with more exciting adventures from the wasteland. We'll go into courts. I believe we're going to go into Vegas to the library, see if we can't get somebody hooked up with some more skills. And that is it. So appreciate you watching. Again, thanks a lot for letting me be a part of your day. And we'll see you in the next video.